or if not just, you know, uh, grab a beverage of your choice, relax, sit back. Maybe I'll put you to sleep. You never know. I have a great voice for that. Um, but everybody in the Zoom room, uh, you're welcome to put your questions and comments in the chat. Uh, I do have chat open up. I have chat open up on YouTube. And as soon as Rob goes live on Facebook, we're ready to roll. We've been live for about a minute and a half. It was about 15 seconds after you said, I'm going to say hi to YouTube. Oh, look at that. I see. Now I see Facebook. There it is. Meeting is streaming live. Good evening, everybody. How's it going? How is it going? So tonight... Um, I was I was sitting I was sitting at the desk and Rob come past me earlier and I was like what am I going to do and he's like I don't know what haven't you done in a while and so I started thinking about it and I'm like what are some of the things that I absolutely can't live without in X lights uh, over the past few years and m maybe it's not that it's not that we don't know that they're there maybe it's that we take it for granted that they are there and so what I wanted to do was I I I don't want to call this a greatest hits of X lights I I would rather it be some of the I don't want to call, and I don't want to call it hidden gems because they're not hidden but they're just wonderful additions and X lights that I don't know that people have really given it the credit that have been added in so um I I kind of did the dartboard type thing and I scrolled through the list of uh release notes that were in X lights and I ended up somewhere in between 2021 2020 and 2021 and um, so all of the all of the things that I, I have kind of prepared tonight are are from this era. And I would say this is this is pretty much the the growth era of X lights when we really had uh, when the dev develop not we, but the developers have really nailed down the upload to controller. They'd really nailed down um, they'd really nailed down uh, that they didn't want to have uh, a. Uh, a, a what was it a setup tab anymore and it became the controller tab so there were a huge number of changes 2020 to 2021 that really affected what we use today and i do not think that the software we use today if you tried to go back in time to do the things that we're used to doing i think a lot of people especially the ones who started since 2020 and 2021 would really have a hard time understanding the background history of x lights to get things rolling in their show which is why that's why we do what we do because we know that the, the that this can be challenging but we also know that um you have to have a lot of patience for it and one of the biggest things that rob and i both have seen has been a number of people and, and if you're in chat go ahead and put your hands up if you if you agree with this statement but um uh, but how many of you were so close to the edge of just giving up because this was just so hard and today today compared to back then hands up if you do you know today compared to then it's really not as hard but it's still complicated and there's a lot of hoops that you have to jump through. But the developers have done, done a wonderful job. And I'm going to share with you tonight four of the things. Well, I, three of the things. And one's a bonus if we get time for it. But um, but the first thing I, th I think that is really something that came out because I've done a number of polls in the Pixel Pro University Facebook group. If you aren't in PPU on Facebook and you want to join the group, there's a link down below or just go to Facebook and type search in and look for PPU and our group will come up and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll let you in there. But um, I've done a number of polls over the years. And one of the things that you can tell is, is that about 80% of the XLH users uh, enjoy mapping sequences rather than creating their own, not that they won't create their own, but, uh, but they enjoy the build better. Uh, or they they like their hands on approach, but um, I, maybe it's seventy five percent, maybe it's eighty five percent. I don't know, uh, but it it usually the poll when we run it, it's usually in and about there, and that's with you know three thousand people, four thousand people in our group, and so I, I think that's a good sample size to say that that that's pretty accurate to make that statement. Um, but one of the things that that was released, and this is 2020.49, and this is something that Scott Hansen released, it was November, um, it was November of 2020, and he added this thing called import model blend mode. So if you purchase your sequences or you download them from the Google Drive or you have different vendors or you share them uh, from one person to another, 
one of the one of the features that's in X lights that maybe you're not aware of is the fact that and I'm going to get my screen setups to uh, share screen real quick. Um, that's the one. And let me switch over to there we go. Everybody can see what I'm looking at. Um, one of the features that has always been in X lights, if we come up here to the uh, uh, X lights, the sequence settings, if you go into sequence settings, we have this box here. It says allow model blend, uh, allow blending between models. So if you do not know what this does, I'm going to walk you through this really quick. I'm just going to click done. If you make a change whenever you're in the sequence settings, it usually will re-render the sequence if you change, especially the frames per second or the timing. Um, but suffice to say, I, I, have a, I have a sequence here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to create, I'm going to go into my display elements, and I am going to select my new master layout. And this is what I usually sequence to. And I'm going to make my sequence follow my master view that I generally follow whenever I sequence. So um, what, what I'm talking about whenever I'm looking at doing um, this model blending, if we come down here and we put an effect on, let's say, uh, the PPD wreaths, that's a, that's a really easy one. To, if I put the on effect on here, there you see two PPD wreaths, they have the on effect on them, right? Now, um, if I come down below the PPD wreath and I put a red single strand effect and I put a single strand effect across the petals, you can see how that red is going to go across the petals, okay? That's because whatever is above in the hierarchy is always going to over is going to be overtaken by what is below it. So if I change this to let's let's change this to per model default and make a little bit more sense per model default. Or no, let's make it per model preview. That that makes a little more sense per model preview. Uh, or per preview. Maybe we'll try to overlay scaled. That works. We'll make this nice and big so that we can see it a little better. There we go. Okay, so you see the red overtaking the white. But if I try to put this on here, the red's always going to overtake this. It's always going to overtake it. If I make this white, you're going to always see the red no matter what. So the red's going to cover up whatever is above it. OK, but what model blending is, is a little bit different. If I go and take. Um, uh, let me go ahead and put that on there. And if we go and then look at this model blending, what happens is, is we blend things together when they when when you allow model blending, the effect will blend between the two effects. So if I do something like 3D fade across this, you can see now a little bit of pink going across some of these pixels right there. See how that's a little bit pink because it's blending between the faded part, the 3D faded part of the single strand effect and the solid color here of the, of the uh, white that is coming across it. So it's blending those models together. Another, another way to see this would be, um, another way to see this, let me go ahead and do this. Here's red over top of, and you can watch the whole house effect here. Uh, and we put, let's go up to the all display group and I put the butterfly effect on here. And we zoom in and just watch where these are blending together. You can see the colors start to blend together, especially if I use white down here on the single strand effect. So this is layer blend. This is, this is model blending in X lights. So you see how it's, it's blending the white within the color of the butterfly effect from the whole house effect. And that's because of the hierarchy of the way x light sees where your models are. And this is why it's important whenever you set up your sequencing that you have your models in order. Now, why is why am I bringing up model blending? And, and model blending, especially whenever you import a sequence, um, when you import a sequence, you have no idea how the original sequencer sequence their song. So for instance, I generally leave this allow model blending. But if I take this off of here, this is what tends to happen. If I go ahead back down here to the bottom where I say uh, I have the uh, PPD Reese and I just put that single strand across here and we do this 
like this and let's do a per model per preview. So now you see this white going right across here. I'm going to make that nice and large. I'm going to three, I'm going to 3D it so you can see it fade off. Now, if I come back up to the top and we go ahead and put the butterfly effect on here. Oh, I hit, oh, I hit bars, not butterfly, bad client. Do you see here the butterfly effect now goes ent uh, entirely across the entire display, but because there is an effect that is attached to the PPD wreath, there's no model blending now. Where it blended before, now it's like, no, shut it off. Don't let anything else through. As long as there's an effect there, it doesn't allow it to blend, even if it has the 3D turned on. So why this is why it's important that, 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 um, that Scott added this functionality. And because you had to go into the other person's sequence, open it up. And after you opened it, you had to go into sequence settings and look and see, did they check it or did they not check it? So that's why the enhancement that Scott added in is so important. If we go in here to import a sequence, when we go to import, import no matter what your default setting is, because your default setting could be you could allow model blending or you could not allow model blending. It's a sequence setting. It's per the sequence. It's per the sequencer who, who designed the sequence, whether they wanted them to blend together or not. So if I don't want to blend, but then I go into the import sequences, import effects, and I, I pick out any sequence here. Let me see, package sequence. Um, let me go to Blue Christmas, Elvis. Maybe it's under blue. I don't want to, uh, no, well, package sequences go back in there. Oh, I don't see it right now, but, um, I'll just pick anything, doesn't matter. Um, what you see whenever you bring up the uh, the import model dialog is you see this import model blend mode. And this is the feature that has been added. If your sequence is not set to model blend or blend models, um, then this import will match it to what you're sequencing to. And believe it or not, this was a huge question almost any time uh and and I, I know tom's with us tonight tom uh mr christmas 1000 here uh or 2000 that is excuse me he's he's the he's the second run um i remember him asking specifically hey can you put in your store tell us which blend mode you used and uh n that was a that was a huge uh controversy of you had to you had to know what it was before you went in uh or you had to switch over to their layout whenever you unpackage the sequence and open it up. So um, yeah, that was a that was a pretty nice addition. Uh, and it automatically imports the blend mode. And yes, it's very relevant. It's relevant for everybody who, especially the 70 to 80% of the people who uh, in who enjoy uh, mapping sequences, sharing sequences, buying sequences, whatever it is that it is. That's one of the things as soon as I spun through and I, I stopped at that, that was the first one that I saw. And I thought, man, that's a great Edition. It's something that today none of us ever think about, but in 2016, 2015, we thought about it and people asked, why doesn't it work? And now we know why it doesn't work, or now we know why it does work. So that's number one. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in chat. Um, let me see. Uh, one, uh, this is a great question somebody asked in chat here in uh, PPU. Uh oh. YouTube, can you hear me? YouTube, can you hear me? Give me some feedback, YouTube. YouTube looks like YouTube lost audio. That kind of stinks. Okay, looks like they can hear now. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and roll on. I'm sorry, YouTube, we'll have to, we might have to upload from Facebook now. Um, yes, huge thanks to Scott. Um, so the question in chat here in uh, in the Zoom room is, um, sorry, I might miss the, the, the beginning of part. What XLite's version does the blend mode option appear on? So this is 2020.49. So this is this is the end of 2020 or into November 
I think because it was it was sequencing season, and if it was in November of 2020, that was everybody was mapping sequences. So this is something that you would have wanted to have available to you if you were mapping your sequences. Um, so that's a great question. Um, okay, so the second thing that I want to go through, and I'm sorry to all YouTube if you didn't have any audio. Uh, the first thing, the first thing was import model blend modes. The second thing was uh, show groups, um, show groups of a model, or if it's a submodel and if it belongs to, uh, if it belongs to uh, uh, some sort of model property. So one of the questions that used to come up was, I am seeing effects on a model, and I didn't put the effects on that model. Somewhere, somehow, Xlights is magically putting effects on this model somewhere that I'm telling it not to, but it's doing it anyway. And so basically what happens is, is we have this function in Xlights that allows us to build groups in our layouts. So if you're familiar with Xlights and you're probably familiar with something that I call a logical group, it's logical to group like models together. So for instance, I'm showing the candy canes now. Uh, we have column matrices, we have these uh, door restars, we have the floods, we have all of these different awesome little models that we can create groups where it's logical to put all of those into a group so that when you map your sequences, it makes sense that you know what you're mapping into. With that being said, though, um, what happens is some people get group happy. In fact, they get so group happy, they have the left half of the house, they have the right half of the house, they have the center half of the house or center part of the house, the center third, we'll say. And and there's nothing wrong with that. If you like sequencing, then do it up, have fun. Uh, I like to keep things simple. There's there's plenty, like in our pro layout, there's plenty of, 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 of groups that you can mess around with. But the problem with having too many groups is that you start to lose track of what's in what group. So the nice thing is, is that you can click on the group. It lights everything up that is inside that group. So you can see here as I click on things, oh, this is this group has the star offsets on it. This is the PPD wreath group. There's two PPD wreath, wreaths in our layout. We hide one, but we sequence as if there's multiples. So uh, whenever you map and if you have a lot of high density props, you know that you can utilize some of those effects and they'll still look pretty good because we're sequencing more than one, although you never see it kind of hidden in our sequencing. Um, we have a lower roof. Well, the lower roof happens to have a number of models, but in that lower roof is also pretty much our all roof. All of those models are in the same kind of groups, but they're across two different groups. Now, how do you know what model, what groups a model is in? So if you click on a group, especially like the icicles is a perfect example. If you come over here and you select the individual model, you can see in model groups, this is a new addition that was added 2020.55. This is closing in on the end of 2022 or 2020 that is. And you can hover over top of this. And if this line is here, it means it's in a group. And these are all the groups that when you sequence that you can tell what it's put into. Now, if you're familiar with sequencing and importing sequences from one vendor to another, all of us vendors, we do our own thing. Um, I, I personally, Rob hasn't changed the layout. I haven't changed the layout. We've been pretty consistent for about six years now, over six years. We've been very consistent about keeping things rather similar so that when you map, you know you're going to get the same thing every time you map it in. That's, that's one of the things we do. Now, uh, with that being said, if you go and purchase a sequence from, let's say, um, uh, Showstoppers, or you go to Fairy Pixel Dust, or you go to Sequence Solutions, Barry, uh, Michael, and Diana, and Teresa, and Heath, and all of the other great sequencers that are out in the community, if you buy a sequence from them, they may build their groups completely different than ours. And it, when they do, this is what happened. This is what happens. They build their groups different, so you have to build new groups to match for theirs. And whenever you accidentally map something from ours into one of maybe their groups, or maybe you map something from theirs into our groups, maybe something shows up that's a little bit weird. And this is how you can come in and find out exactly what group your, your, your effects are applied to, because when you map your sequence over, you can see the effects on there and you can say, wait a second, is, 
it, it, is is that in the Snowflake Large group? Let me go look that up. I can go find, I can go see if that that there in fact is in the Snowflake Large group. But it's also in the Snowflake Arms Rings Tips group. It's also in this, it, and it does. I can't point to it. Um, but I can show you that it does, as you hover over it, it's there. And that allows you to quickly and easily find anything that might be causing an extra distraction in your sequencing when you map something over. So that's another great addition. It's something that's really been, uh, like Keith added that, again, a, a, a huge thank you to developers, all of them, uh, Daniel and, and, and uh, the next one that I want to talk about. Uh, if you have any questions, again, go ahead, throw them in chat. Oh, boy, YouTube, you're going at it, aren't you? Um, Brian said, all of these hidden gems are lost forever. No, they're not lost. Um, you should have audio. YouTube, you should have audio. Give me a, give me a, give me a notification if YouTube's not getting any audio because I show that you are. Facebook, can you hear me? Let me uh, let me open up Facebook because I can't see Facebook either. Hold on a second. Okay, YouTube, can you hear me now? YouTube, can you hear me now? Uh, uh, oh, okay, no need to get growly at me. Come on, there's got to be. Okay, now we got a yes. I mean, I have bubbles going over here. I can see the audio going out, but I don't know what's going on. So I apologize. So, uh, well, we're, looks like we're going to have to, um, looks like we're going to have to um, uh, upload this from Facebook. So Facebook, I hope you're paying attention um, because you're getting the whole thing. Okay, so I hate to say this, but we're going to have to move on to the third one. And maybe we'll we will add a fourth one in tonight, and I'll re-upload this. So I, I know this is a, this this has been a uh, a little bit more. Uh, I don't know why I was ready for the stream on YouTube tonight. I don't know why I didn't start um, with the audio. So with the fourth thing on the list, or the third thing on the list, uh, one of the things that um, that may not appear to be as interesting. But again, these are there. There's different hidden gems in X Lite. There, and I again, I hate to say hidden. They're not hidden. It's just something that if you went back to 2019, 2018, and you started sequencing, um, let me go into the pro layout here, and I'll pull a uh, sequence up, and I'll show you. Um, I'll show you the next thing that has been very helpful uh, in 2021. One. The very first version of um, the very first version of X Lights for 2021. Uh, this edition was put out by Gil, and I remember somebody asking for this in the GitHub uh, in the GitHub uh, as a, a feature request. And it may not seem like it's a big deal to be able to do this, but whenever you're on your sequence screen, so here's your sequence screen, right? One of the things that you were never able to do was change the order at which you would see your timing marks in the sequence. Now, and and I use this not very often, but I do use it. Uh, sometimes whenever I create my timing marks, one of the things that you can't, you could never do was you couldn't reorder 
the timing marks. And why is that important? Well, because sometimes it's harder to see one color over another. I've adjusted my colors so that it's easier for me to see the colors whenever you go out and you're, you're trying to see your timing marks for different things. So for instance, here you see, uh, this is the note onset. Here's bars. You can turn them off. You can go to uh, like, this is my hit. So I, I used a color that was going to uh, contrast against the background. And it was easier for me to see the uh, basic X lights colors were like a dark red, a dark blue and against black, you couldn't see them. Uh, or at least it, it, for me, it was hard to see. So um, they added the color change in and that was a nice addition. I think that was thanks to Gil. Uh, they added the color change in, but one of the things that somebody asked for was the ability to change these orders around so that you could then move something like your note on set. It could be your second one down, or maybe you put your hits up at the top because that's something that you want to see more at the top. And it really made it easy for you to keep the order per your sequencing. Uh, for, for example, for me to sequence a song, I always have a basic timing track at the very top. Basic or uh, outline or something simple that keeps me kind of organized whenever I'm trying to sequence. It helps speed me up. It's, it keeps me, keeps me rolling through the sequence instead of like wandering around. Um, usually I put the bars at the very bottom and usually I have the beats. Uh, the beats are usually the second one up and I usually put the, he the hits down there. But whenever I need to see something, it's usually easier if I just push it all the way up to the top and then I can do that. And whenever I move it to the top, it's easier for me to see it. So that was a nice addition into x Lights. It was something that I, I don't wanna quote Gil uh, because I, I, so I'll paraphrase. Uh, he said it was something that somebody asked for a long time ago and I just never thought it was important enough until I sat down and I did it and I, I'm glad I did. So he said something to that effect. He was happy to he was happy that he did it, but he never thought that there was really a good reason to have it. But it is definitely useful. And I can't see going back to pre-2020 and picking up X lights and not being able to change the order of my timing marks. So that that was a nice addition. Um So Chuck asked a great question, and this kind of I kind of skid past it whenever I started this other one. Chuck asked, "Can I put individual submodels into a group?" And the answer to that is absolutely you can. Uh, so, for example, I have a uh, spinner alert group. These are all spinner. Uh, we I call it the radiation symbol, but I I created this uh, submodel uh, a couple of years ago, maybe two or three years ago. And uh, those are all in one group. That's the only thing in the group is the uh, the radiation symbol off of the large spinners and the small ones. Uh, the PPD wreath has, oh my gosh, tons of tons of them. There's centerpiece and the middle center rings and the diamond arms and the outer diamonds and so forth. So that's a great question. You absolutely can. Um, you can even, whenever you're trying to create groups, you can hide you can hide the submodels so that you don't see them here because some some models have too many submodels. So this is another thing that was added into X lights probably more recent, probably in the past two years, I want to say. Um, but it's nice because whenever you open that up, see how that expands and shows all those submodels, but you don't want to see them. You just want to see the model find it a little quicker, especially if you have a lot of props in your show. So there you go. That's the bonus. That's your bonus. I wasn't expecting to show you that one. Um, so good question, Chuck. Thank you. Um, so let's get back to the last thing, the last thing. And again, YouTube, I am so sorry for all of the issues tonight, but, um, I got two more, I got one more for you. Um, this, this last one is, um, uh, it's called uh, add code to allow for generation of a GIF file for preset preview. This was added by Keith, but it was kind of in combination with, um, the work that Scott Hansen had tried to do to make viewing your presets way easier. And well, why would you need to view a preset? Well, let's, let's uh, get out of this sequence here. Let's close the sequence, uh, discard the changes because we didn't change anything. Um, and I'm, I'm just going to do a new sequence and done. And Put a timing mark down and I am going to right click. Well, well, it doesn't matter. I'm going to right click. I'm going to select in the time group. 
right click and hit effects preset. And my preset showed up on another window. Okay, so if you have preset effects prior to 2022.1, which is also the same release that Gil put out uh, the allow sorting of timing tracks in, in, in the master view. Um, Keith added the ability, and this is, again, this is in combination. It was Scott's idea to do this. He just didn't know how to implement it. And, and I, if I remember the story correctly, and uh, Keith came along and said, well, I figured out what he wanted to do, and I found a way to do it. So between the two of them, they came up with this idea, this little screen that you see right here is the ability to see what a preset looks like. And what x -Lights does is when you create a brand new preset effect, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you this right now. Um, if you create a brand new preset effect, let me go find uh, the mega tree here and or the matrix. This works. And it doesn't matter what the preset is. You could do a pinwheel and you can do another pinwheel. And this is your preset, right? Have it going, have them going the opposite way. Okay, so there's a preset. There's a preset effect. Um, all you have to do is select this and you add a new preset. And we call it, we call it, we give it a name. And now that we've given it a name, it automatically creates this preset effect and it shows you what it looks like before you deploy it now prior to this uh and i'm not showing off i i i've worked for many years with x lights so i've i've developed a lot of presets and after i create them i move on and find other ones and i keep creating them and i keep creating them and i keep creating them i like creating presets but i don't like reusing them because it's kind of like cheating. So I find other ways to sequence. And that's so I, I've, I've gained a lot of presets, but I don't like to reuse them. Um, but the the bottom line is, is that whenever I do need a little bit of inspiration, because we all get a little bit of, uh, we get a little bit of what do you call uh, writer's block or artist block, you can't think of what to do. This kind of helps me snap out of it a little bit sometimes. So uh, having that on your screen to be able to help you see what's going on uh, in a preset to kind of motivate you to put something down. Uh, but the other side of this is inside your show layout in your in your in your layout, what X Lights does is it physically creates a GIF file. And you can physically open this GIF file. And this is an actual picture image and it will play it for you. If you play it the I, I think it will play it for you. It, um, but we just created one, didn't we? We called it Zoom, right? So if we go down to the bottom here, maybe, maybe there is one that's called Zoom at the bottom. Maybe I don't know. But this is this is a folder, a file that's in that is in your show directory. That if you open it up, it should show you the preset effect that you had saved and the name of it. And it doesn't tell you where it's at. It just Oh, this is the name of it, right? Uh, here's one I did a while ago, a long time ago. I want to say Christmas Tree Farm. That was whenever I did that. So it was a preset. So um, that was, this has been probably the biggest game changing thing in X Lights in 2022 or 2021 that uh, between Scott and Keith, that, that small edition made a huge difference. And I, I'll be honest, that video, whenever I made the video, I was so shocked and I was so excited because to be able to see your preview of your sequences and uh, know that, um, know that they were, uh, that, that, that you could just at any time, just open up that preset preview. Uh, that was always a great wish to be able to just click on something and say, oh, what do you got there? Oh, I've got that. Oh, what do you got there? Oh, I got that. And uh, it's really nice to have that. So uh, again, I, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Um, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, that's pretty much what I have for you guys tonight. I hope, uh, I, I hope that it was a little bit helpful. I wish that uh, I would have caught the note a little bit earlier, but uh, we will re-upload this video to YouTube. Um, I, 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 Wish I wish it wouldn't have turned out as bad as it did. If you have any questions, by all means, pop them into the group, uh, into the group chat. You're welcome to join us here on um, 
on, in the Zoom room. And uh, we're going to continue tonight with, uh, if you have any questions, we'll open up to open mic night and uh, anything on in particular in X lights. If you have a question about, you're welcome to uh, jump in and uh, give us a uh, give us your your comments on what, what what it is that you're working on. If you have issues trying to set up, if you have issues with your controllers, Rob's here tonight. Uh, we're happy to get you going. If you have any questions, by all means, jump in the Zoom room and join us. So, uh, guys, that's it for me. If you're on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for joining us. Um, by all means, it, it's great having you here. Jump in, jump in and visit with us. Stick around for the evening. Uh, PPD up all night gets here probably about 1030 and things get a little crazy. So you're welcome to join us for the after party, I guess. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful evening and we'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now.